mother in a church hat clap Man, that sugar gave her color purple coming back uh, When that whole week beat you up and stretch you But you hear that organ playing and remind you of your blessings And on another note, she just hit another note Chills down my spine, got me crying, make me overload this morning do me a favor clap your hands real big and let's give God some praise let's usher in his presence this morning do I have anybody with a hallelujah in your spirit hallelujah Lord glory to your name father we love you hallelujah hallelujah Lord. we give
give you all the praise. Good morning, and God bless you, Miracle Center family. If you're watching us by YouTube or by Facebook, we want to welcome you here to the Miracle Center Christian Church in Ventura, California. If you live here locally, that's 38 Taloma Drive, which is where you can find us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We are so excited to worship with you this morning. Amen. Amen. Is anybody ready for an awesome experience in the Lord, for a good word that can change and transform your life? Well, that's what we're here for this morning. We're here for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Pastor Lonnie and Dr. K, they believe that they have a word for you this season of your life that will help you grow, that will help you shape your future. Amen. But before we get into that, let's lift our hands to the heavens from which cometh our help. Let's go, and go ahead and open up the service with a prayer, and then we'll get right into worship. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as one body, God, as one group of people, Lord, we are here for you. We thank you this morning for the breath in our bodies. God, it's your breath that you've given us. And so we freely give it back to you in worship and praise and love and adoration, God. And as we open our mouths and we freely bless you, Lord, with our worship, we thank you in advance that your presence is here in the midst. We thank you that chains are falling, that chains are being broken, that people will leave differently than when they came, God, and you will be glorified. We thank you for the word that will go forth today. We thank you for the power in which that word will go forth to pierce and penetrate and change people's lives. For this, God, in advance, we give you praise. And all of God's people in the room said amen, and they clapped their hands. Hallelujah. He's a good God. We're here for him. Hallelujah. We bless your name, O oh God. We thank you. Ooh, we thank you, God. Anybody else thankful for the things that God has done in their life? He picked you up. He turned you around. He dusted you off. He cleaned you up. He renewed you. He made you a brand new creature in him. That's why we're here for him. He's so good. He's so amazing. Hallelujah. Just take a few moments, if you will, with hands lifted. Whatever you want to say to the Father, now is your time. God, we love you. God, we're here for you this morning. Woo, change us, shift us, mold us like only you can. We're here for you, oh God. We love you. Anybody love him today? All right. Here we go. Everybody say. We shout your praise from our hearts to your ears. All the glory is yours now forevermore. Hear our worship. All we can give is for you. We're here for you. So we dance and we sing. the church yeah Church, here we go. 
Everybody hands clap. This is my favorite part. If you don't come, if we won't move, we're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you. If you don't come, we won't move. We're desperate, Lord, for a touch from you.
That's it. That's it. Hallelujah is it. That's the highest praise. That's it. Hallelujah. He's a good shepherd. And he leads me to the waters. I've got goodness. And I got mercy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With my hands lifted, I say hallelujah. When my back is against the wall, I say hallelujah. When I'm happy, when I'm sad, when I'm up, when I'm down, when I don't understand it, when it all seems funny. Thank you, Jesus. If I could just, woo, if I could just set this atmosphere with worship. Clap our hands and give him some praise. Hallelujah to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, the 
everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. favor church if you are able can you just go to your neighbor greet them someone you did not come with say them hello good morning god bless you something that god has done in your life it can be anything he woke you up this morning he put breath in your body he saved your child he paid a bill just something that god has done for you amen and after you've done that please have your seats and turn your attention to the big screen for a video to the Miracle Center where you are not a And I'm Tracy, and we're here to invite you to... And if you're watching Welcome, all first-time guests to the Miracle Center where you are not a visitor, but you are a gift. Have a free cup of coffee on us in the foyer. And if you're watching us for the first time online, please text the first time to 805-261-4445. If you'd like to be baptized, please text BPTZ to 805-261-4445. Make your statement of faith obvious with baptism. Attention all married couples. Join MCC Couples Connect for a special meeting on April 28th at 7.30 p.m. where the topic of discussion will be shoring up marriages for the long haul. For more information, text MCC Connect C at 805-261-4445. We have an active and exciting team ministry that builds and equips our teens with confidence to spread the gospel to their peers. Check out their Instagram page for more information at MCC Youth VTA. Hello, women of God. Are you interested in worshiping God and dance? If so, please contact Sharon Aranda at 805-290-5011 to get more information. Join us on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. on our Facebook Live or YouTube channel for online Bible study. It's a well-invested hour of your time to learn Bible principles for lifelong victory. And here are more ways to connect with us through simple texting. If you are in need of community resources, MCC can help. Please text HELP ME to 805-261-4445. And I'm Tracy, and we're here to invite you to MCC Couples Connect Group. And if you are married, no matter how long, if it's been a year or if it's been 50 years, you are invited to come join us to come shore up your marriages. To join us, text 805-261-4445 with the keyword MCC Connect C. Our first meet and greet is going to be via Zoom April 28th at 730. And we will be meeting monthly online. And we're hoping that you will join us for some teaching and fellowship. Hope to see you there. And it is a privilege to be here on this church on fire this morning. Amen. Amen. We are so grateful. Last week we had about 50 people do an altar call last week. Amazing. Amazing. And you know what? The pastor, the pastor was just phenomenal. He did this like an orchestra leader without any notes. I sat here and watched him, and I was just so impressed 
and how he spoke and how he lifted all those people up. If you are new and returning from last week, we want to welcome you with open arms. Amen, amen, amen. Romans 15, 7 says, we welcome one another. Therefore, just as Christ welcomes us for the glory of God, amen? We welcome you online. We welcome you online, which means if you're here in church today, be ready for the manifestation of God's holy presence. Amen. Amen. A spirit of readiness. The people that returned, we are so grateful. Say, I am ready for the word of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am ready for the word of God this morning. Amen. If you're online, say, I am ready. I am ready. Readiness is an action. It shows us that we are hungry, hungry for God's word. Amen? Amen. So let's be prepared. Let's be prepared this morning for our tithes and offerings, for our declaration this morning. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. And we want to thank those online that have already given. If you need um, to give by the cash app and also we have um ready to give also on our church online app as well so if you're giving online we would encourage you to put a dollar sign in the chat box and say i'm ready ready for my blessing today so for our declaration this morning i'm going to ask that you all stand again i'm going to ask that you Lift your phone if you're giving by cash app on phone. If you're giving by envelope, that you lift your envelope. And also, just lift your hands so that we're all in unison. You ready? Here we go. We're going to say this together. Dear Heavenly Father, is, 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 is with you. thank you for your overwhelming love and giving so much to me and my household. As a citizen of your kingdom, you have given me rights, privileges, and promises. I stand on them now in the name of Jesus. I trust you will take my giving as an act of love and give it back to me, pressed down, shaken up together with a cup of running over grace. I decree and declare it will flow back to me, unhindered and undisturbed. I receive your blessing so that I can be a blessing to the advanced kingdom on earth. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I am ready, ready. Please come forward if you're ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Lord, you've never let me down faithful in every season so why would he fail now he won't
truth, y'all. He won't. He won't. No matter what it looks like. He won't fail. No. He won't fail. He won't. He won't. I've tried it for myself and I know. He won't. My God won't fail. No. He won't fail. praise all over this room. If you know Put your hands together at the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He never failed you. Come on, can you lift a praise in here if he's never failed you? Listen, we are in a prophetic season right now with the solar eclipse happening tomorrow. You know, there's a prophetic reasoning for the solar eclipse. It says he won't fail you. You made it through. You know, the solar eclipse is where there's an alignment. 
Well, you know, God is getting ready to align some things in your life for prosperity. This is the season to take you into the next. This is your season of alignment. This is a season of the fulfillment of the promises that you have been believing for. How many of you have been believing for something? Come on, this is the season for fulfillment. You've been at the mountain long enough. It's now time to step over into the next that God has for you. Are you ready for next? Can you release a sound of victory in here that you are ready for next? This is a prophetic time. This is not a time to keep your mouth closed. This is not a time to not dance and clap for God. We are in a season of fulfillment. Jesus is coming back soon. You gotta be in a position of fulfillment. You gotta be in a position where your light shines in the world. And this is that season. Say, this is my season. This is that season. Now put your hands together one more time for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The season of fulfillment. Thank you, team. Listen, as you have your seats, I want you to tell your neighbor, we do this a lot in here, tell them it's the season of fulfillment for my life. I've been declaring for years. I've been declaring for years. I've been standing on promises for years. Well, the time is now. This is my season of fulfillment. Come on, my time is now. This is that season. Now listen, we have a lot going on. This is Super Sunday. <laughs> we call our first Sunday Super Sunday because we got a lot going on on the first Sunday of the month. And one thing we are incorporating in our Super Sunday is we want to acknowledge birthdays for people who serve on the Miracle Center, Center team. So what we are doing to acknowledge birthdays, we've ha asked all the directors to submit birthdays at the beginning of the year because we appreciate what you do. If you work on the Miracle Center team, we appreciate what you do. So we want to acknowledge your birthdays. Birthdays are very important. They're very special. So we have some April birthdays, and what we're going to be doing is we have a card for you and a gift inside, and we're going to be giving the birthdays uh, cards to the um, information center. So if you work on the team, just stop at the information center at the first Sunday of the month. We'll have a gift and a birthday card for you, okay? If we don't have a birthday gift and a card for you, see your director, because we're asking the directors to help. So our birthdays for April are Pastor Anthony, <laughs> Kirsten, Charles, Jalen, and Harmony. These are our birthdays. So these are our birthdays for April, and we want to make sure we acknowledge that. Now listen, God wants you healthy and God wants you whole. Amen. Say, God wants me healthy, and God wants me whole. Come on, when we speak, we're putting words, and we speak God's word, we're putting medicine on our mouth because Proverbs 4.22 says, God's word is medicine. Say, God wants me healthy, and God wants me whole. Now listen, we know that God aligned the organs in the body to certain parts of the hands, neural pathways in the hands. When you clap your hands, you're stimulating the organs of the body. When you saw people shouting at the altar, when you see people clapping, they're being positioned for health because when you clap your hands, you're circulating health to the organs of the body. When they were shouting hallelujah at the altar, they're increasing intrathoracic pressure that allows the lymphatic fluid to flow. When you come to church, you're being positioned for health because God wants you healthy and God wants you whole. Can you put your hands together for a system of God? There's no system like it. God's system doesn't require co-pays. <laughs> God's system doesn't require a six-week appointment before you see a doctor. You come to the church. A church is a place where you are positioned for health. And one thing we do in the church that positions you for health is holy communion. So if you didn't get a communion element this morning, I want you to lift your hands up. One of the ushers will get one to you. I saw our greeters as I was coming in, our lovely, warm, smiling greeters handing out communion elements. So if you didn't get a communion element, I want you to get one in your hand this morning because I want to lead you into a confession for health 
taking Holy Communion this morning. As I mentioned, God's Word works like medicine for the body. And when we make a confession of faith for health, God allowed us and God allowed the cells of the body, listen to, listen to your confession. Listen, Proverbs 4.22 says God's Word works like medicine. So I want you to understand what we're doing. We're going to make a confession of faith for health because when God's word is put in your mouth like medicine as a declaration, the cells in your body were made to listen to the words. God the creator created this incredible machine called the physical body. And when he created this incredible machine called the physical body, he created it for the cells to listen and take instructions from your words. That's why Proverbs 18.21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Did you know, listen, there is a phenomenon that's being studied in science called negative body talk. Say negative body talk. There's a phenomenon they're studying. It's called negative body talk and they are finding that this negative body talk is associated with mental and physical health issues. Negative body talk. Now remember, science only reveals what God already said. Science is only revealing what God already did, what God already said, what God put in his word. And Proverbs 18.21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. That means some people will stay sick because they are constantly talking about sickness. They're constantly speaking negative things over their body. And God wants you healthy. God wants you whole. He wants you to live long and strong to complete your life assignment, your life purpose. Early death does not come at age. Early death comes when you leave this earth before completing your purpose. If you are not done with your purpose, you are to live long and strong and complete your life assignment. A doctor does not give a prognosis to tell you when you die. God numbered the days of your life. You live until you complete your life assignment. Say, I will live long and strong to complete my life assignment. So hear my words this morning. Listen, stop tearing down your body with negative words. Stop tearing down your body with negative body talk and start speaking with respect over your body. When you look in the mirror, speak with respect over your body. Come on. Speak with respect over your body. Regardless of your size, your shape, your color, your age, or defect, speak with some respect over your physical body. Your body is a temple of the Spirit of God. And God created hormones and cells to align with what you are speaking. Speak with respect over your body. Because the Spirit of God needs a healthy body to work through. So speak with respect over your physical body, starting today. When you look in the mirror, stop speaking negative words and criticizing the vessel that the Holy Spirit wants to work through. Speak with respect over your physical body. Do you got it? You got it? So let's take the communion. And let's take our communion, speaking respect over our body with a confession of health. Are you ready? Why don't you stand to your feet? To get your communion elements ready, get them opened. I want you to say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. And the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Therefore, I'm saying so. Now remember what I said, God the Creator made your physical body to take instructions from your words. So you have to speak this. I want you to say, I declare my body, this body is a temple of God. And I take this covenant meal with faith 
to seal a heavenly contract for health and wholeness in my body. Now I want you to take your bread out and I want you to lift it up. And I want you to say this bread represents the body of Jesus Christ that was beaten and bruised so I may have health and long life. Now go ahead and eat that. Now I want you to say I receive health and wholeness in my body right now. Now take a couple deep breaths. Yes. Now lift up your cup. Say this cup represents the shed blood of Jesus on the work of the cross so I may be protected and preserved. Now I want you to take that cup and go ahead and drink that. Now I want you to say I speak health over my body. I speak long life over my body. I speak with respect over my body because God wants me healthy and God wants me whole. Now circulate that in the organs of the body. Come on, circulate that. You got some medicine. You got some medicine. It wasn't free of charge. It was paid by the blood of Jesus. So receive your healing this morning. Now listen, I want you, I know we've done this already, but I want to do it again because when you connect with people, when you say hello, when you smile, when you reach your hands out and touch people, hormones are released in the body. The hormones are oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine. So I want you just to take a few minutes and I want you to go greet a couple people and I want you to tell them, speak with respect over your body. Go find a couple people, just tell them, speak with respect, introduce yourself, speak with some respect over your physical body. in it. Your seats, boy. That kid looks like me on yeah, the screen. Yeah, I got a god, don't change with the season. Looking guy there. Oh, yeah, Next race, like hey, 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 it's okay. It's all right. It's hey, 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 hey. It's all right. Have a seat, brother. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. We missed that one. The Holy Spirit won't interrupt Himself. He's not gonna have me come talk, and then have somebody interrupt me. I'm under His anointing. You can do. We'll, we'll, we honor His Spirit when He moves. Sometimes we're motivated. We have to be very, very careful. Now stretch your hands towards me, everybody, will you? Come on. Lord, we give you all the praise. Thank you for your spirit. I thank you. You know everybody by name, by situations. I thank you. You know what's going on in their house, you know our successes. And you know our secrets. I'm amazed at how you love us. For that, we say thanks a million. And today, 
and thank you that victory has come to the houses of those under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands one last time. Come on, you can do better than that, folks. Come on, everybody. So I want to, uh, I want to invite you all. Next Sunday is going to be huge. Rob McCallan, who is my youngest son, is going to be, uh, he's run our, what we call our uh, services. He sort of um, orchestrates things, and he's done it now. I don't even know how long it's been, but I know it's been a few years, and he's been just excellent. And I was uh, telling Dr. K in the green room, man, I'm going to miss Rob's handprint because he's just so efficient at things, and he makes my job so much easier. He stepped in at a time where his dad needed some help, and uh, literally his, a lot of things that he is involved in, many of you probably seen him on uh, social media somewhere. Um, he is an incredible uh, recording artist, and um, no joke about that. He's big time, but he's, he put a lot of things on hold to help the kingdom of God and to help the ministry and to help his dad. I'm believing that uh, whatever was supposed to happen, whatever needed to happen, I'm believing that uh, God is going to bring supernatural harvest in his life. And he's going to find out, watch this, he's going to find out that you can't do more than God. You do something for God, he's going to do more for you. And he's, he's, about, he's going to find that out. And uh, God can do in one month what it will take you one year to do. So I'm excited about this. I want you all to come. We're going to be not only praying for him, but honoring him next Sunday. And I want everybody to be here. I'm telling you, uh, I've done this for many years, and the load that he's lifted off my life has been enormous. So I want to invite you all for that. Now, I also want to have you get ready because I'm really excited about a lot of things that's coming up. You, you hear the MCC Connect, uh, the couples MCC Connect, uh, Kenny and Charles, uh, Kenny, Kenny and Tracy, Tracy and Kenny. Uh, what an incredible couple. You've got to hear their story. Um, they've been to hell and back, literally. Literally in their relationship, and I don't know a couple quite like them. You think you've been through something, I know. Here's a couple who raised four biological kids and adopted four kids and raised them. Somebody said, mm. <laughs> you know you got to be anointed to do that, right? Yeah. And they did it, and you got to hear them. They're, they're one of the most remarkable couples. And to be a black and white couple, to last, they're celebrating how many years? 26, 28, 20. 29, almost 30 years. <laughs> Listen, very, very rare. And they're at the top of the ladder at this thing. So. You're going to be blessed with that, and I believe you can sign up through our Simply Texting. If you're not part of Simply Texting, you need to get a part of Simply be a part of it. And um, it's simple to be on Simple Texting. <laughs> How you doing, man? It's good to see you. So I want to talk to you about some stuff, and I, I want to start by telling you something's going on in my life right now. I, I, I don't quite understand all of it, but I know I'm being transformed again, really. I'm, there's, I'm having these experiences. Some time ago, I told you guys when I would have these dreams. And um, I remember once, Kimberly woke me up because she thought something was going on. They were just so real. <clears throat> and this, this angel would come and take me out of the room and we'd go through a portal that was at the top of my, the, my ceiling. And every time we'd go, he'd take me up in the air and he'd let me go and I'm just standing suspended in the air. 
I think I told you one of the lessons he taught me, he, he, would, he would question me. And one time he said to me, what's the most important thing in life? I'm saying God's word. That was wrong. I'm saying family. That was wrong. I'm just going at it. And um, I thought, wow, I, I don't know. And he took his fist and he punched me in the mouth and his fist went through my mouth, down my stomach, and he pulled my breath out. Some of you remember me talking about that. And I'm standing there going... And I knew I was dying. And just before I could, you know, pass out, I guess, he punches, puts his fist back through my, my mouth, and he puts my breath back in me. And he says, the most important thing, and never forget it, is the breath of God in you and in other people. Yes, Lord. And it, it took me to a whole other level. But I had experiences like that. That really shaped my life. In fact, I was not really the same then. And it, it so affected me. In fact, I started seeing things and hearing things. I had to go to the doctor because I thought, okay, what's going on? And um, I found out this is all supernatural stuff, but it transformed my life. And some of you don't understand this like I didn't then, but now I'm starting to have experiences again and I'm wondering why did it stop, and then now it started. The last time it stopped, I remember, because this is almost an every night deal. It was like, I mean, listen, folks, 3 o'clock in the morning, I go outside because I'm instructed by this angel who called himself Grace Grace. He told me to do something. 3 o'clock in the morning, I go outside, right outside the house, and it was, he just said, go stand out there barefoot, and he was telling me the earth is giving me something. I went back in the house. So it's really a weird situation, but it, it was a transforming part of my life. Now, please pay attention to this because what's starting to happen now is a little bit different. And as I'm starting to study and research God's more, God's word more this season, things are starting to unfold. Sometimes your mind is not ready to receive what's being downloaded in your spirit. Your mind sometimes has to catch up to your spirit. Because when you start understanding this, you'll understand the different dimensions. Now, all of us are here because, because we think um, this is just what we do. But this is more than what we do. This is so divine and so strategic. The, the fact that you and I are talking like this and that we're here, there's so much dynamic divine connection in this moment. And a lot of times we miss that. And I don't want you to miss it this season because starting today as I deal with this subject we're going to deal with, which is a spring off from part two of last Easter Sunday. I don't want you to miss this because I am now under a assignment to take our church where we've never been, and I'm ready to do that. I, I, yeah. Well, you're clapping. I hope you're, I hope you're ready to go there. And part of that is to understand the importance of you showing up as you. Now, most people, very few people understand that statement, showing up as you. We understand how it is when somebody shows up that we think is better than us or we think, you know, some celebrity or this wonderful person. But you don't realize what happens to the world when you don't show up. And most of us never show up because when we first come here to our mother's womb, we quickly get hijacked by the social consciousness of this world. And we never have a chance to do purpose, to do what we were designed to do before we came here. So life is never, ever at a place where it's supposed to be for you. Most people, a lot, die this life, and they never walk into what they're supposed to be here for. But yet we look at people and we say, wow, I'm glad, um, like Steve Jobs, what, if Steve Jobs didn't show up as him, just think what we wouldn't have. 
Henry Ford, if he didn't show up as him, just think what we would not have had. So a lot of people search the internet to find things, but things are searching people to find them. And until you understand that, and you fail to show up as you, the thing that you are supposed to find won't make its way in to bless other people. People think, wow, Michael Jackson, what a, he, can you imagine somebody like Michael Jackson lived? Well, he brought to the world stage what you're supposed to. Or like a Beyonce, people are owing to her, they think, wow, they, they look at her and they can see, wow, that's cool. But they can't look at themselves showing up at what, at who they're supposed to show up. So we look at these other people who showed up as who they're supposed to show up as, and then we live our life fantasizing about their life and what it might be like, and we miss out on who God wanted you to show up as. And the tragedy about that, every one of us go through it at some point. And what we have no concept of is how our lives are shaped from day one. You know, I'm really starting to appreciate when Dr. Cage was talking about it today, about how your, your system listens to your words. I don't know if you all understand this, that she mentioned the scripture, as a man thinketh, so is he. And she mentioned um, about the words you speak in Proverbs. Death and life is a power of tongue. The reason is because every time you talk about something or think about it, you bring it about. Every time. So this last experience that I just had, it was an eye-opening because I had to come face-to-face -face with truth that Lonnie McCowan, everything that's happened into you, in your life up until today. It didn't happen to you. It happened for you. And even greater than that, everything that's happened to my life, it didn't happen to me, it happened through me. So God shows up first, he comes to all of us first, and he always does stuff for us, he works for you, he's doing things for you. Look what God did, you call people, man, God did this, and, it, and you and I are shocked because we didn't do anything to deserve it. Anybody had any, ever had anything like that happen? Shout amen. amen. I'm going to try that again for the people in the back. Everybody better say something. Has God ever done anything for you that you know you do not deserve it? Give me a big amen. Yeah, because God always starts off, and he just does it. He's just doing it. I can't tell you how many things growing up and young in ministry that God just did. Some of those things I thought I was doing. It's kind of like when Kirsten was a little girl, I don't even know how, she might have been three then or something, maybe four. But I'll never forget, I was moving the furniture in the house and Kirsten was very, very, I mean, she was so animated. Well, she's like her daughter, Kalea, okay? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. If you've seen Kalea, you've seen Kirsten. Well, Kirsten, who was a busybody, wanted to help me move the chair, or the couch, sofa, whatever it was. And so I remember I'm moving it now. She thinks she's helping me. So I said, grab that in. So it's push, push. Now I'm dragging the thing. She thinks she's pushing. She is, she's really thinking she's pushing. I'm thinking, that girl has no idea. I'm doing all the work. <laughs> the only reason I'm having her help, because she's in the way. I really just don't want her to get hurt. And I was thinking about that the other day because the Spirit of the Lord brought that to me. He says, listen, all this time you think you've been pushing. But he says, no, I just have you holding on so you don't get hurt. And so what I want to say to all of you, I know you think you've been pushing. I know you think you're doing it. 
But even the things that you think brought pain. I'm going to show you in this series that it did not happen to you. It happened for you. And when you start understanding that nothing can defeat you, when you start understand this at another level, this is what happens. You stop living. The world system lives from desperation. Everybody in this world lives. Deep down, it's for desperation. Whether it's going to school, going to work, medical stuff, people go to the gym, everything, it, it, it boils down to some form of desperation, something that we are trying to avoid or we don't want it to happen or we, we're trying to get rid of. Everybody in this world system does things. Everything you do is from the root of desperation. I want you to think, of the, think about that for a second. I mean, everything, including when we get dressed in the morning, is out of a sense of desperation because we got to go outside. But everything we do, and that's what the world is about. And what fuels desperation is fear. This world system operates off of fear. That's what it operates off of. Everything that we see happening and what's getting ready to happen in this next season with the economy, with uh, what's going on with the shift in the world, with the economics. All of this will happen because fear can be inflicted. Fear is the number one way that the system in this world, through satanic influence, moves the masses. The pandemic was about fear, and instantly everybody shut down. Nothing does that greater than fear. And Fear feeds desperation. But when you get to a point like what I'm going to be sharing, and it's what I'm starting to walk through now. Now, I'm going to tell you, I am not there, but I'm telling you, I made the decision just recently. I'm going to go through this, I call it portal. It's a door. A door, we call it doors. In the spirit, it's a portal. Same thing. It allows you to leave one place and go to another place. Now, I'm going to say some things that's going to challenge you because my job is to bring you up here. If I never bring you up here, why are you here? My job is to provoke you. You come here and think, well, I've never heard of that. That's really good. If you come here and think, yeah, I've heard that. I'm, I know I can master that thing. Then you should come up here. <laughs> but my job is to provoke you. So some people say, well, I've never heard that. No, duh. <laughs> that's why you're here. There's something in you that is ready to hear it. Listen to what I'm saying. When the student is ready, the teacher shows up. This is how the anointing works. And there's different times that different people show up in your life, and there's different times when the Lord has moved on me to shift to another version because you went to another version. Would you believe that your version of you has a lot to do with my version of me. I know people don't really understand this, but when you start understanding it, you move away from the fear-based system that operates out of desperation, listen to me, and you move from desperation to living from deity. Deity? Yeah. That you start to understand Wow, I'm more than a human. What? Yeah. That there's something in me that I know has got to be more than a human. What is that? Deity. That's d the divine nature. That's who you are. That's what you and I came here as wrapped in this flesh, wrapped in this body, that is the very thing that limits you and me. You understand, the only thing that limits you and me from being in wherever we want to be in as fast as you blink is this physical body. In the invisible or the spiritual world, there's no limitations. Amen. We have li this body, as wonderful as it is, it creates limitation. It gets old, it dies, it gets sick. But one day... You'll shed this body. You may not understand this. This is, when the Bible talks about earth, this is the earth. 
From dust I came and dust I shall return. The Bible talks about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Eden, this pureness that seeds could be planted in Eden and they would develop. Eden here, this is where Eden is now, right here in your mind. Eden's inside of you. Seeds, your thoughts, your words are seeds planted in Eden. And they're going to manifest on this earth. This is your earth. And you are bringing things to your Eden, to your earth every day. When it hit me, and I had to admit, I had to say, wow, everything that's happened in my life has happened because I brought it into my earth. This is my earth. And until you understand that, you're never going to be able to change. It's always going to be the government. It's going to be the whites. It's going to be the blacks. It's going to be the browns. It's going to be the reds. It's going to be the Hispanics. It's going to be the greens. It's going to be the rich folks. It's going to be the poor folks. You're always going to have somebody. And you never change. It is the trap that keeps you desperate. And when you get to a place of moving from living from this desperate state to this deity, then you walk into what I'm getting ready to read and share with you now. And I'm barely touching the surface, but I'm going to move there as fast as I can. But let me tell you, just what I'm experiencing, even here today, standing here, I'm experiencing something I've never experienced before. Ever. So let me read a couple of things, and I'll tell you this real quick. Let me just show you this. Now, let's look at a couple of very powerful scriptures so that you and I can become, we can allow the real us to awaken. Just say that with me. The real me awaken. awaken. Come on, say it again. The real me awaken. awaken. Now, why do you have to keep saying that to your mind? You heard Dr. K because your words. So your thoughts are words, and your words are words, and whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you speak about, you bring about. And the ambience and the aura, your, your ambience, what comes from you, is because of the constant reciprocating, the thinking over and over. When I walk into a room, my ambience, my aura walks in that room too. It comes from the reciprocation of my thinking over and over and over. And scientists say, and it's been proven, most of us live our lives every day the same. Everybody, anybody remember that movie Groundhog? It's like Groundhog Day. It's like every day is the same thing, right? And most of us do that. Guarantee, I've said it before here, 90 to 95% of everything you and I do is exactly the same, which means you got up out of the bed the same way. You brushed your teeth the same way. You got in the shower the same way. You start bathing the same way. You got dressed the same way. Every single day you do that. Why? Because we're stuck in a system that we think is living. And it's a thing, listen to me, it's a thing that's keeping us limited until we physically die so we don't step into purpose and realize I'm deity. I could be doing so much more. I could be doing so much more that when I leave here and people search the internet, They will search the internet and find something that can bless them when I'm gone because I showed up for the thing that they're looking for. Amen. And the only thing stopping that, the only thing, is you and I not knowing who we really are. Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am? Some say you this, some say this, so who do you say I am? And the question is, who do you say you are? Who are you? Well, I'm Vivian's boy is what I thought. It's my mother's name. Bless her heart. But when I start realizing, no, I'm not Vivian's boy. Yes, this body is. Yes, God used her to bring me into this world. But when I started understanding who I really am, I started moving, listen to me, in a dimension, in a level, in a consciousness that I didn't live in before. The consciousness of limitations, of fear, to the consciousness of I can do all things through Christ. It was Jesus himself who said, the kingdom of God is where? Where? In you. In you. In you. Everybody say, the kingdom of God is in me. The kingdom of God is in you. Come on, say it again. Ready to go. Say it. 
So when the revelation, that hasn't hit you yet, I can tell you where you're sitting. When you get that, you understand why Dr. K said, your body's a temple. Yeah, it is when you start understanding it's a temple for the Holy Spirit to live in. I'm carrying a kingdom. Now I understand why the scriptures say what they say. For an example, in uh, Philippians, let me just read Philippians 2 and 5. Listen to this scripture. Philippians 2 and 5. Guys, I'm going out of order because of my time. Just pop that up for me. Everybody give me a big amen, would you? Amen. I'm watching you all on screen. I hope you're with me because I'm talking to some of you. I'm talking to you right now. All right. Philippians, you guys have that? No, don't have that one? Okay, they don't have that one. All right. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. All right, I don't know how this is second row in a week has happened to us. I don't know. But I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the Amplified Version. It says, have this same attitude in yourself, which was in Christ Jesus. This is the Amplified Version. Listen to this. Listen to this. Have this same attitude. Everybody shout attitude. attitude. Have this same attitude in yourself which was in Christ Jesus. Okay. It says, look to him as your example in selfless humility. Okay, we'll do that. Verse 6 says, who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God as one with him, Possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity. Yet he did not regard, listen, he did not regard himself or was not afraid to say he was equal with God. This is a powerful scripture. Let this attitude be in you. Now, why is this? Because I started to say, you probably thought I forgot. God always starts off by doing things for you. But that's not where he wants to stop. He does things for you. And then as the relationship matures, which is what you're supposed to do. Remember, the scripture says, go from glory to glory. And this is what's happening to some of you. You, go, you get to a level, and then what happens? Frustration sets in. When there's frustration and stagnant in your life, it's because you have come to the plateau. You have tapped out at the level you are, and you're supposed to go here. I don't care if it's in your finances, you get frustrated. In your relationship, you get frustrated. In your body, you get frustrated. In your career, you get frustrated. In your walk with God, you get frustrated. Every time frustrate, listen to me now. Every time you reach frustration, Frustration is because you've plateaued out. You've outgrown that version of who you used to be. And the tragedy is you're still answering people on a version that you've left. And it cre creates more frustration. You say more frustrated with your relationship, with your finances, everything you have, because you are, you are still dealing with people and answering questions and trying to fit your life into a version that you have left. And so when you start understanding this and you start growing, so first God will work for you. You look and say, look what God's doing. But then God starts working with you. He starts working with you and you start seeing, man, God is with me. You, and you, you, you have this layer of confidence that you could, you know, I'm going to step out and do this because you know God's with you now. Before he was just doing it for you, but you, you feel, and then you're telling people, you, you say, you know what, I think we can make it. Why? Because you, you have this sense that God is, he's doing this with me now. But that's not where God wants to stop. He goes from working things for you to with you. Now, here's where he wants to get. This is deity, where he starts now working as you. And that's where I am right now. That's where I've come to my life. Where God is saying, I don't want to work with you anymore. I want to work as you. But your mind has to stretch so I can do that. And in order to do that, you have to do that from the one premise, the only premise that God can do that from. And that is found in, in 1 John. Do you guys have that one? 1 John 4. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever 
love, whoever loves, has, and, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Verse 8, anyone who does not love, read that part, read 8 with me, find a screen, everybody, and you online, read this too. Ready? Verse 8. Ready? One, two, three, read. Anyone who does not love does not know. Read that again, please. Ready? Read. Anyone who does not love does not. One more time. Ready? Read. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Now, I want to stop right there and say, in order for this level to work, where God not just works for you, level one, with you, level two. The level he wants to get to where you live in deity is where God works as you. This has to be the thing that comes from every pore in your being. Anyone who does not love does not know God. That is so powerful. I'm going to unpack that in the next few weeks because this is what's going to bring us the peace of God you're going to find out the peace of God is fueled by God's love. The peace of God, the Bible says, guards our heart. That's what we're going to get into. It guards our heart as we live on this earth. So no matter if you go through poverty, if you go through pain, if you go through pressure, there's the peace of God that stands as guard, like somebody guarding a, a bank, the guard of your heart to make sure nothing disturbs your peace. Because if I can keep the peace of God in my heart, I can manifest things Things from the Spirit will manifest like this. What causes manifestation? In other words, when you say, God, I'm praying for this, amen. Well, after the amen, the time that we're waiting, because we think we're waiting for God. Are we waiting for us to get together? What are we waiting for? We're waiting for the, conduce, the environment to be conducive so that what God is bringing into our environment, he needs a vehicle for that to travel on. And what causes the invisible material to affect the atoms to bring into existence, into your life and my life, what we need is the peace of God. And when you understand this, it'll absolutely change your life because you won't have to manipulate, you won't have to try to hustle anybody, you won't have to twist any arms, you won't have to bow down to anyone, you just start understanding, wow, I can make this happen. And you can go from where you are right now and change any and everything in your life. And you can think, well, I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm too this, I'm too that. You got to stop. Listen, just like the earth, you are the earth. Now, I'm going to be wrapping it up here soon. And we have, we're going to baptize so we can start preparing for that also. But I just want everybody, I'm, I'm so thrilled about this because when you, start, you, when you start to walk in this level, now, I made a decision just recently, I'm going to walk in this level. So I'm taking these steps. I'm, I'm taking big, bold steps because I want to do it as fast as I can because I want to walk you through this. But it's understanding if I'm going to live in this level of deity, I have to understand this comes from the premise or everything in my, every pore has to come from the love. I have to love God. And in order to love God, there can't, listen to me, there can't be anything opposite in me outside of love. When I think of you, when I think of me, that when I think of my kids and I think of your kids, there cannot be a difference. That when I talk to you, I start understanding and watch the difference. Desperation, that's the world. When we talk to people, I don't know if you know this, this has been proven. When you come to people, well, you just think you're somebody. I wish you wouldn't do that. It's already been proven. You may not know this. But when people do that, they're really doing that because there's something in you that they don't like about them. You got to understand, this is a change. When people come, and I don't care what they're doing, they come after you and say something, I'm telling you, criticism in a negative way is only because in a desperate society, that's the consciousness we live in now, the world, I can only tell you what I don't like about you because when I look at you, I see the reflection, the part of you in me that I don't like, that I'm uncomfortable with. When you get this, you listen, the way people talk about you, you just say, baby, let me pray for you. Let me, let me help you. Because <laughs> you go to a, a higher level, another level of consciousness that you're living. Opposed to this low level, with my natural mind, I tap into the Christ in me. A consciousness that is motivated by one thing, love. And we, that is a heavy 
direction to go because very few people, we don't, very few people that I know have ever operated completely in that. Jesus certainly is one. I met one or two others, but very few. Now I'm saying I want to take that dive to do that. But let me tell you, it's not easy because I realize even driving, just doing simple things or things in my life that still frustrates me, I realize, wait a minute, Lonnie McCallan, you're not coming from a place of love. Now, I can still be frustrated, but it has to come from a place of love. When Jesus whipped the people out of the temple, he did it from a place of love. But most reasons we do it is because of fear and desperation. And when we get to a place of love, things won't bother you. Like, so, you know, the house is clean or whatever, and then your kid accidentally drops the Kool-Aid or knocks over your coffee and the glass breaks. Now, what conditioned us to explode? Because the kid broke a cup accidentally. You! And then we go, another person comes out of us. Okay, something conditioned that, and I'm saying that was conditioned from this, this natural or this nature that comes from this system, this world system of desperation and fear. Well, the Spirit of God has been teaching me that if we operate from this other level of divinity, which is the consciousness of Christ, then when that happens, I'm able to control it because I'm coming from a different core or a different source where, yeah, I don't really appreciate the fact that I just mop and you drop the coffee, but neither am I going to explode like I would under this system of thinking. Are you all understanding what I'm talking about? Give me a big amen if you're with me, would you? All right. So, I'm going to read this. All I have time to do is read, I'm going to read this scripture, and then we're going to wrap it up and be take up from here next week. This is going to take me some time to get through, so I hope you're all ready to change your life. Amen. Romans chapter 12, that's why Romans 12 says, and do not be conformed, listen to this, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. So this system has to put superficial stuff on in customs because it is appealing to this flesh and it's temporary. So we need the superficial stuff in the customs, but it's not the real stuff. We get upset about things. We let things control us we're, that we're in control. I'll give you one, money. Money was created by man. Man created money. We're the creators of money, yet the creation now controls the creator. The creation says who we are. Yeah, money you feel, I'm special. How can the creation tell you you created it? How are you going to let the creation tell the creator you're wonderful because you have this much and the other person doesn't? You see how we get mixed up. But when you operate from this Christ nature of divinity, I'm at a whole other level of consciousness, then I don't look at money how I used to look at money or people or things or anything else. I realize it's part of the superficial values and customs. It says, but be transform and progressively change. I should be progressively changing. Why have you stopped changing? Who said you're only supposed to get to this place where you're going to church? Folks, church is at the bottom of this thing. You're supposed to walk into a place, another dimension, where nothing, listen, nothing causes fear in your heart. Nothing causes shame in you. And you, I'm going to show you in these scriptures where the Bible says, put on kindness, put on. The reason it tells us to put these things on, because listen, God does not want us to try these things. He wants us to become these things. So I shouldn't be trying to love you. God is love. Lonnie McCown is love. That's what he wants in our life. So a close of the scripture, it says, and progressively change as you mature spiritually. Notice, not church-wise or spiritually. How? By the renewing of your mind. I'm going to close right there. We'll finish here next week. By the renewing. The renewing. The re Everybody shout renewing. renewing. Now, when you say renewing, it means your mind was something before. There was something there before. What happened to it? I'm going to tell you what happened to it. From the time you were born, the mom and daddy that raised you, the environment that you were in, the school you went to, the TV programs you watched, all of those things took the mind you had. 
You never had a chance to develop it. You never had a chance to use it because the superficial, superficial values and customs robbed it from us when we were babies. So now the Bible says you got to renew your Renew it to what? To what it was before the superficial values and customs robbed you. Okay. All right. It's time for us to baptize. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. We're going to baptize. Are they all ready? Okay. So I'm going to have our singers come on up. Now, this is what we're going to do, folks. We're going to, here's how we end the service, which is cool. And we're going to finish here next week. Remember where I am. We're going to, did this help anybody today? Was this? Okay. Cool. Listen, I'm going to tell you now. Okay. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you now. Imagine going into the room. It's pitch dark. You know the light switch is over there. You ever go in there, and you don't want to hit something, so it's dark. You're doing this, right? Because you're going to, and every, now, if somebody looked at you, and you know what you're doing, they think, boy, you look dumb, right? But you know where you're going. Okay, I might look dumb to some of you, but let me tell you something. I know where I'm going. Amen. And I want you, I want you this season not to miss this. I promise you, it's going to absolutely take you, our church, your family, everybody to a whole nother level. Can you imagine what would happen? If this level of Christ consciousness of deity we walk in, that when we look at each other, I am never looking at you different than the way I look at me. Can you imagine? You can't. You can't even imagine that. That every time I talk to you, everything we do, we do just as if we're doing it to ourselves. All right. So we're going to baptize, and after this, we're going to have you all dismissed. We're going to walk through what we call our prayer tunnel. As you just you walk out, and myself and the pastors, we just declare a prayer over you. All right. We didn't get a chance to sing one. Let's sing a verse of our song, Take Me to the Water. And I want to say one thing, then we're going to baptize this beautiful young lady. Come on, sing, you guys. Come on, everybody. couple of things just before this young lady's baptized. Now, generally, we baptize a whole group of people. We're baptizing her today because she's so special. <laughs> but whether we baptize a group of 100 or a group of one, we're going to baptize. That's how important this moment is to us. But I want to say something. Not only is her smile infectious, I mean, it's just, just incredible, but She's come here, and right away, she got involved and started working in the ministry, and she's helping out. Just an incredible joy of a person. And any pastor would love to have somebody like this on their team. I'm so delighted she's part of this house. I really am. And the other thing that's so special, Pastor Anthony, who has assisted in the baptismal pool, uh, and normally Pastor Eric's leading. I remember when Pastor Eric used to assist me. And then he, he graduated, and he starts leading our baptism. And Pastor Anthony assists him. And this is Pastor Anthony's first baptismal that he's leading. So it's a very special moment, and I'm so glad. And I believe some of the family members came from out of town to experience this. When a person's water baptized, it's like wearing a wedding ring. It doesn't make you married, but it says to the world, I'm proud for everybody to know who I belong to. And when you get baptized, it's a way of saying, God, I don't mind. I want everybody to know I belong to you. That's what this is about. If you've never been water baptized, you need to do it. It's the first discipline that you can follow in the Bible without having to do like a 40-day fast or something. So I'm real proud of this moment. So Pastor Anthony, take it away. Brittany, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? I have. Based on your confession, I now, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, and in Jesus' name. Woo! Take me to the water.
dismiss our service, and I'm going to tell you how. Have your seats for about 30 seconds. Let me tell you how. In a second, our pastors are going to join me down here. Listen to me very closely. This is real important. The Bible says in Job, you shall decree a thing, and it shall happen. I'm going to share with you when you pray from the level of Christ consciousness, this level of deity where you're walking in a place that you know who you are. You'll declare a thing, and the scripture says it shall happen. When you find out you're made in God's image, God said a thing, let there be, and the thing showed up in the earth. And when you and I declare a thing, things will show up in our earth. And when people walk through this prayer tunnel, the pastors and myself, we do this once a month, Super Sunday, we declare something over their life. And this is one of the most powerful things. the pastors come down here. Now, on the first Sunday, we also end our service with something called First Fruit. That's why I call it Super Sunday. We do a lot of stuff. So we do the prayer tunnel and the, and the First Fruit all at the same time. Now, First Fruit is not tithes and offering. We already gave that. And folks, let me tell you, we only do this one time a month because it is a very scriptural thing. And let me tell you what I love about this. If you do it, it'll change your life. The Bible says that they would bring the first fruit, not their tithe, that belongs to God, the first fruit, and they would come and sow it in the temple, and the priest would declare blessings over the fruit that they didn't bring. So they actually dealt with all agriculture. So they would literally bring real fruit. So they bring, they look on their tree, they say, okay, here's the biggest lemon, and they bring that lemon, they bring it to the temple, and the priest would say, every other lemon is blessed. That first fruit covered the rest of the fruit. Now, it is a very scripture thing because God sent his son the best as the first fruit, Jesus. Jesus died. God gave Jesus. All of us are blessed because of the fruit that God gave. Amen. We declare each month for people, the thing I'll say over each person is first fruit blessing. So this is what month? April. So I'll say April, first fruit blessing. Now, participating in this, and what activates this is your belief. All things are possible to him that believe. So as you believe this, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't know how it happens, but it happens. You will find out your April budget. You may, it may look close, but you're going to find out, wow, we made it through. Because you're under an anointing of a first fruit blessing. What you gave, bless the rest. Yes, so that's what I am going to declare. Each pastor will declare something else. They'll tell you that in just a second. So I'm going to ask you in a moment, I'm going to ask everybody to walk through the prayer tunnel. And when you bring your first fruit, if you need an envelope, the ushers have passed them out, I think, already. Or if you're using your phones, because there's going to be a bucket here. And you're going to just lay, that's your first fruit. And when you put it in there, I don't want you to put it in there like, okay, that's over. I want you to put it in there like, my April budget is taken care of. I want you to believe that. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I'm facing. I don't care what you're facing. Nothing is greater than the power of God. Nothing. Amen. I don't care if you're walking in a fiery furnace, lions that can eat people, or a giant that wants to kill you. Nothing's greater than God's power. But you've got to believe this. If you just walk through here like, oh, that's nothing. That's what the pastor said. Nothing's going to happen. I'm telling you, once you believe it, you just turn the switch on. Do it and find out if I'm wrong. It proved me wrong before you not at least participate and get the blessing. And once it works one time, nobody can talk you out of it. I have people write me letters. Are you going to do first fruit? I kid you not, because they know it works. All right? So I'm going to ask the pastors... If you'll come and stand with me, we're going to create this tunnel, bring a mic. They're going to tell you what they're going to say, because don't ever let anybody just speak over your life unless you know what they're saying, because they'll declare a thing. It shall be established. All right? So they're going to tell you what they're going to say. So you're just going to walk through real fast. 
You don't have, don't, no one's going to stop and talk. They're just going to declare it. You walk through, and you believe that what they declared happened. So I'm going to be here. I'm going to start it off. You drop your first fruit in. I'm going to say April first fruit blessing. All right? Now let's have the pastors say what they're going to say. Divine health. Unspeakable joy. Goodness and mercy. Breakthrough. An abundance of favor. Okay. So now you know what's going to happen. So I want everybody to stand. So you're going to come by here, drop your fruit in there, or use your phone, and, and believe that. April is taking care of it. I don't care if it's your business, your housing, schooling. I don't care. All I want you to do is believe it. And then I'm going to declare first who bless him, and then you'll walk through here, okay? And each pastor will declare what they said, okay? All right. Singers are going to be singing. And then the ushers will tell you how to do it as soon as they start singing. Okay, singers, take it away. <laughs> 